The yellow sack spider is a spider whose scientific name is long, difficult, and you can twist your tongue trying to pronounce it. This name is Keracanthium punctorium. Here it is written down for you. The spider sowed fear in people's hearts, ears, eyes, rectums, and other body parts after being associated with several scandals. Especially last year, but probably earlier and later too. Among other things, there was a scandal where some councilwoman raised the alarm after probably this spider bit her daughter. Terrible circuses were happening. This spider is the main character of today's episode, and we're about to go looking for it. Here, in this display case behind me, exactly in this place I will show you. Do you see? We have two spiders. One has a label, but I'm unsure why the other doesn't. However, I can make a label for it since I know the data. Labels are crucial for creating a collection. This spider needs a label just like the other one has. This is a male and female of the yellow sack spider, or Chiracanthium punctorium, and these are prepared specimens from Poland, quite large, especially this male, whose chelicerae are powerful and who is quite large overall. Exactly, I have two prepared specimens, and since it's mid-July, the day is fairly warm, I'm off work, so it's the perfect opportunity to simply look for this spider alive in the field, and that's what needs to be done. So let's go. By the way, here's a package that came from Germany today. It contains butterflies worth about 1,500 lotus. How much? Let me know if you want me to do an unboxing of this on video. I don't know if you'd be interested in something like that at all. In the meantime, I'm gathering my stuff, and we're off to hunt this monster. Someone once asked me what I really take on such trips. Well, first of all, I take a macro lens. An important part of my backpack is adrenaline, which I always keep on hand. The second one I kept in the fridge. This adrenaline has an expiration date without a fridge, so you also have to watch out for that. Additionally, some small containers like these, if I caught and wanted to show you a spider up close without the possibility that it will bite me and without taking it in my hands, and also some other trinkets. Nothing special is found here. Maybe I'll take tweezers and that's it. We also packed the macro lens, but gently this time. There was a flood here two days ago, and there's the black arrow. Nice. By the way, let me know in the comments if you had any unpleasant or maybe even pleasant experiences this year or in previous years with this spider that we're going to see. I'd love to read about your experiences with it. Oh, green. The police are writing someone up. They're in trouble. We arrived at the destination and a lot is happening. As an introduction, we are in a place that has been featured on my channel twice, if I remember correctly. And from both trips... Hey, wait, there's something here. And from both trips there are... Something was going on here? Oh, there's a bug sitting here? Actually, it's larva. Okay, never mind. Anyway, I think I can already see two nests of the yellow sack spider. Here's one and here's the other, so I didn't have to try too hard, but... Okay, let's go on. This is a place near the outskirts of Rochlaff, where I once met a viewer, by the way, who was riding a bike. What I wanted to convey to you is how to find such a spider, and as you saw, it's super easy, because there were already two nests right by the parking lot. This film aims to familiarize you with the species, show you how to find it, or what to avoid if you don't want to encounter it, as some people prefer to steer clear. Uh, thirdly, some, uh, I don't know, chat about whether there is really anything to be afraid of, and so on and so forth, right? So the classic stuff that was there last year. The bumblebee is flying. I found quite an interesting cocoon, but as it turns out, it's not a yellow sack spider cocoon. It doesn't look exactly like a yellow sack spider cocoon. It's a cocoon of some spider from the family of crab spiders. He's here and moving. Oh, nice. I might be able to show him. Do you see him? He's about in the middle of the frame now. Definitely a crab spider, but I'll need to investigate further to determine the exact species. Ouch. An ant bit me. That was really unpleasant. I don't recommend it. Those darn mandibles are strong. Let's go into the bushes for a while, maybe it won't run away. Listen, I noticed a very nice butterfly sitting here, though I'm not sure if it will focus on it now. Oh, do you see? It's a female, oh, and it flew away. Now they're flying over there. This is a female butterfly called a marbled white butterfly in English, and as the Polish name suggests, oh, it just sat here, it has a black and white checkerboard pattern on its wings. Very pretty butterfly. Check this out, go away from me. Oh, it sat down there too. Hey, there are some gruesome scenes here, because there is a dying bird. I don't know what happened to him, but maybe a cyclist hit him or something. Sad. Oh, this is cool. Have you ever seen a completely yellow beetle? If not, I'll show it to you now.
Wow, wow, wow. Listen, what's going on here? I've come across an ant nest. There are so many of them here. There's a massive amount. Check out what's going on here. A huge amount. And there are so many of them over there. My goodness. And really, these outlets are here. Well, I see at least two. Well, I'll tell you, it's a bit of a mess because I've already covered quite a distance and there are no cocoons, those characteristic of a yellow sack spider. There were just those two at the parking lot. If we can't find any, we'll have to settle for these, which is unfortunate. I expected to find more of them here. Oh, but here sits another marbled white butterfly. Do you see it? He's getting ready for sleep. Okay, my dears, I found something. It looks just like the kind of cocoon that a yellow sack spider could live in. The question is whether the spider is inside. We'll check. Of course it is. I was right. A stunning large female Caracanthium punctorium, known as the yellow sack spider. Look how it's moving its chalice awry. Show yourself. She's so pretty. I, I have the impression that she is right after molting. Because she is, seriously, I don't know, she looks a bit like jelly. And she's also very calm. I mean, she doesn't attack me or attack a blade of grass when I drove her out. Uh, great, fantastic. I managed to find a huge female. Uh, I scoop the female into a vial and I'll do a macro of her at home. Then, of course, I'll release her here where I found her. However, I would still very much like to find a male because the females are also cool, because they also have large chelicere, but compared to males, well, it's nothing. Male yellow sack spiders appear frightening with their lengthy, large and sharp chelicere. So we just start looking for a male and then we can go back... You know what? I found a cocoon here, but is it inhabited? Unfortunately, no. I can already see that it's translucent and empty. Oh well, we keep looking. Wow, there's a plethora here. Look. One, there's another big one there, and there's a third cocoon here. And I hope that one of them is inhabited by a healthy male, because that would be what I expect from this expedition. I can already see here that we have an individual. The male is here. Oh fuck, he's big. What a powerful male lives here. Well, okay. And in this one, I don't know if you can see here. In this one, from what I can see, there's a female or... Oh no, there's also a male. Oh. This one is also powerful. Oh, but the previous one is bigger. I would definitely prefer to show you that one. This male is amazing. If only we could show him a little bit more for him to come out. Uh... Here it is. Wow, what a monster. If such a spider bites, then it's not nice. Just look at this. It's brilliant. We'll also take this individual and we have a few for the video. So we take the vial and let's go. Great, we've got everything. We have a male and female pair. We'll film them with close-ups and I just found a wasp spider. For those outraged that I took these spiders from their natural environment, relax. The spiders will be fine and return to their original habitat. And I will show you a wasp spider because I'm looking at quite a large specimen. Maybe I can feed it. Look, I spotted it just a moment ago. I don't know if you can still see it or rather if you can already see it, but oh no, it jumped off the net. What a guy. Are you crazy? And it's gone. Actually, she's gone because it was a female. Uh, I guess we are not going to film her. And besides, I don't know if we could have fed her because I can already see prey hanging here. Damn it. Oh, but there's a second one. It's smaller, but it's there. Do you see her? She's there, as clear as day, a nice female. And it would be nice, she's terribly thin. Okay, I have a grasshopper, now I need to somehow throw it into the net. Oh, 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 oh! Why let your sacrifice go to waste? Make the most of it, man! Well, I wanted to do a good thing, but let's discuss the yellow sack spider again briefly. Here, as you can see, I have a male in a vial who will defend this vial, and these are spiders belonging to the Uticuride family, which has a quite interesting Polish name because it is the armored family, and the name itself indicates that something is wrong with these spiders, that they are aggressive, and they really are. It's not that I don't want to slander the yellow sack spider here, that it is aggressive and only lurking for human life. But from its behavior, you can simply tell that this spider will defend itself and there is no point in messing with this species. 
Simply these spiders are just like that, and nothing can be done about it, especially such one could say, aggression can be noticed in females, in males too, because males are defenders in general. Male spiders defend immature females, while females protect cocoons. Each sex has specific defensive roles. The spider itself is one of the largest species in Poland, and it is probably the largest yellow sack spider, as far as I remember. Here, you can see how it nicely cleans its chelicerae. And it is, I must admit, quite pretty because its abdomen is yellowish. The legs and cephalothorax have a burgundy color, I think that's what you can call this color, that it is burgundy. Females are slightly greener, making the spider quite pretty. The leg span is approximately 5 centimeters. As for the venom, the venom of these spiders is of course deadly, but not for humans. To avoid any misunderstandings, these spiders hunt insects, which is quite obvious. Their diet mainly consists of small invertebrates. They actively hunt, mostly at night, while hiding in clever burrows during the day, which I will explain in a moment. The main takeaway from this film is that these spiders are absolutely not our enemies. It's not like they actively hunt people. They can actually bite, well that's their feature, and that's it. But they don't hunt people, they don't want to kill us, it's not their only goal in life. Oh, you see, this male is really big and he's walking around. Where are you going? But as you can see for yourselves, it's not like this spider will immediately bite, attack, and that it's some kind of a madman. This is simply a spider, which now considers me as the floor. And of course, if it creates its burrow, it will defend this burrow, which is quite simple, quite obvious, and quite logical. It's really nice. There's nothing to complain about. One of the interesting things I can reveal to you, because I observed it and simply did not expect such a thing to happen. These spiders can jump, really. They can jump, and it would be nice to show it, but I guess it won't work. Generally, when they feel the ground is ending under their feet, they just jump to save themselves. Beautiful animal. We will need to take him back to the meadow soon. Oh, I can see it's starting to create a seal in this vial, so it's an instantaneous process and it will be sealed in a moment. Today's expedition concludes that there are many yellow sack spiders here. If someone wanted to find them, they should look for something like this. Uh, this is a very typical construction of their cocoon. We have a seal from the top, we have wrapped grass, or another stalk. And the entrance to this gear is from the bottom, and if we squeeze the spider should come out. I can already see it coming out. Will you come out to us? Oh, precisely, do you see? Another robust male just emerged. I won't take this one, obviously, but it's also powerful. Well, this one is very big. I don't even know if it's not bigger than the other one. A giant, it's very pretty. Beautiful creature. Well, so we leave this individual, and under such circumstances, it's very easy to find a yellow sack spider. As for the biotope, it's, chuck, it's the edge of the forest, plus a slope, plus some tall grass, and that's generally the biotope where these spiders live. There are many of them here. Another nest, a bit smaller, but likely also housing a spider. Oh, and I found another wasp spider, also a very beautiful female. Wow, listen, and here some courtship is about to happen. Look, here is a female and here is an adult male, who is about ten times smaller than the female. And I think he's lurking here for this admirer of grasshoppers, crickets and other insects. This is an excellent example of sexual dimorphism in spiders, where the male is significantly smaller than the female. We can find a very similar analogy, for example, in the genus Nephila or Trichonephila, where the females are gigantic and the males are tiny. Oh, and we have another potential yellow sack spider nest. Let's check. Ah, uh, no, this one is empty, but this one is occupied, and here I see that a female is sitting. Do you see it? Here in this cocoon. I won't drive her out, but here is another female, but not a yellow sack, it seems to me, because she is very small. Because, you know, it's not like we only have the yellow sack spider in Poland, right? No, 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 it's not like that. The Polish genus Keracanthium, or the yellow sack spider, includes about nine species, I think exactly nine. Unfortunately, I can't recall if among these nine species there is one that is frequently transported to us along with the shipment of grenades. Yellow sack spiders are generally a difficult genus to identify, just like many other types of spiders, and we can divide these Polish species into two color canons. We have yellow sack spiders that have a dark stripe on the abdomen, and ones that do not have this stripe. Moreover, as you have seen for yourselves, they have sexual dimorphism, just like wasp spiders. This means that females look a bit different than males, and especially females stuffed with eggs, have such a feature that this stripe, even in species that generally have a stripe, it disappears. Due to this, there are many problems with labeling yellow sack spiders. 
As for the fact that the yellow sack spiders are so dangerous and yuck and they want to kill us all, well, that's not true. Of course, people often come across yellow sack spiders because they also live close to human habitats. In Vroslav, such a situation takes place. Well, that's it, and we have to get used to it, that we have such spiders in Poland. These are our native species, not as I have already heard several such statements, that, well, I found such a big spider, which turned out to be a yellow sack spider. Should I report it somewhere? Well, where? This Polish species is common in our country, especially in certain regions, so reporting its presence is unnecessary. So, you know what? I found a pretty cool beetle. Let me show it to you. Maybe I'll manage. Look at this. What a little marvel. It shimmers in all possible colors, from green to red. Well, it doesn't shimmer in blue, but overall... Come here, it is a beautiful beetle that, similarly to ladybugs, leaves a smear. Look how nice it is. This is just a living little gem. All right, off you go, it clung on. And that's about it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the journey. I also hope you like the spider, because it's amazing, it's very scary, but there's really nothing to be afraid of. Well, bye.